Coming up on Mountain News this morning, the world of bluegrass mourns the loss of a musical legend and Eastern Kentucky native. And a tournament in one Eastern Kentucky city raises funds in order to help students here in the Commonwealth. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Well, good Monday morning to you. It's just before 6 o'clock on this Monday. I'm Dakota Makers. Thank you so much for waking up with us. Let's head over to Brandon for a look at your forecast. Brandon, all morning you've been saying it's calm right now, but if you're heading out the door, you may want to take that rain gear with you. Please, because yeah. you will definitely regret it later today if you don't, because the storms, they are a coming. Let's take a look, see what's going on live pinpoint down the radar. And if you live out toward Lake Cumberland, parts of Pulaski and Wayne counties, maybe already in your area, especially the western half. So just be aware of that. It's going to continue to its trek east as we head deeper in the morning hours and into the early afternoon as well. And then after that, we'll have to wait and see what happens. 66 right now, Irvin and Somerset, that warm air really surging in in front of that front. 64 Moorhead Jackson, 62 Pikeville, but 55 at Wise, 54 in Harlan, 54. Five in Middlesbrough. Now remember, Middlesbrough was at 53 just a couple of minutes ago, already up to 55, and Jones with the coldest spot in the region at 50, or excuse me, 43. We're looking at 64 right now in Paducah, but you see a lot of low to mid 60s out there across most of the region. Coolest spot on that map, 50 in the Tri Cities. Average high 66, so we won't be too far off from it today. 85 is the record high set back on this day back in 1991. Dakota? Brandon, thank you. Well, we now have funeral arrangements for a longtime member of our WYMT family who died Friday. Morrison Stepp Jr., a Martin County native, started here at WYMT in 1999 and worked at our station for 21 years up until 2020. During his time here at the station, he was promoted from account executive to general sales manager. On Sunday, Phelps and Son Funeral Home announced his funeral arrangements. Now, visitation is today from 4 to 8 p.m. at the funeral home. Celebration of Life services are Tuesday, October 26 at 2 p.m. in the chapel of the funeral home. Steps family requests in little flowers. Contributions are made to the Morrison Step Junior College Fund in his memory by calling the funeral home at 606 789 8989. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his friends and family. Well, also, Sonny Osborne, one half of the Osborne brothers, died Sunday. A Leslie County native, Osborne began pursuing music professionally at 14 years old. The Osborne brothers premiered in Knoxville, Tennessee in 1953, and the group was inducted into the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame in 1994. Osborne retired in the early 2000s, but he remained active in the bluegrass world through his mentorship of younger musicians. He died at his home Sunday afternoon in Hendersonville, Tennessee. He was 83 years old. Funeral arrangements have not been released at this time. Well, deputies with the Perry County Sheriff's Office are investigating a crash that resulted in the death of one man and injury of another. On the Sheriff's Office Facebook page, the sheriff said the incident occurred around 6 p.m. Saturday. He said deputies saw two men operating a sport utility vehicle on Kentucky Highway 2022 Scobble Creek when the vehicle drove off the road and went over an embankment. He said one man is dead and the other was taken to Hazard ARH. Half of Kentucky women say they stayed sober on a night out due to fear of having their drink spiked. A study of American students found that nearly one in 10 reported that they had been drugged previously. Often those drugs have no color, smell or taste. Drugabuse.com surveyed more than 3,000 women. It found 42% of Kentucky women changed their plans out. After being feared of drug, the national average was 34%. For one in five women who have had their drink spiked, the perpetrator was a friend. More than 400 union workers at Heaven Hill have reached a tentative agreement with the Bardstown Distillery. The company released a statement that the new contract is a five-year agreement between them and the UFCW union. Heaven Hill says it has received the full recommendation of the union negotiating committee. Well, Saturday marked the DEA's national drug take back, a nationwide event movement encouraging everyone to drop off their expired pres prescription drugs at one of the many designated collection sites. Arlissa Williams talked to several individuals who are helping to promote this movement. Law enforcement and health departments across eastern Kentucky have come together to promote Drug Take Back Day. The DEA has uh, really pushed um, and advertised uh, these events, and we generally get a pretty good turnout. 
People can stop in at any selected health department, police department, or KSP post to dispose of their expired medications in a safe and proper way. Uh, this is a way to get rid of it. And, um, you know, we take it in, we destroy it, and it's off the streets. It's out of the community. Like Trooper Pennington mentioned, these events aren't just for clearing out some space in your medicine cabinets. It's about ensuring your outdated prescriptions don't end up in the wrong hands. That, that medication is being taken off the road or off the streets or out of their homes, so maybe somebody don't break into their house and try to steal their medication, or some young child doesn't get a hold of, you know, some medication and take it. With the opioid epidemic that plagues much of eastern Kentucky, Trooper Pennington adds that events like these can also be a small step in combating this issue. Uh, if it saves one person's life, you know, that we've done our job. Offering a proper way to dispose of your old medication, all while helping to keep communities safe. Alyssa Williams, WYMT Mountain News. Now, both of the drop-off sites featured collected a large quantity of medic medication. Lower County Health Department collected 23 and a half pounds of medication, while KSP Post 13 and Hazard collected 17.8. Well, more than 850 nurses from Kentucky shared their thoughts and opinions with state leaders during last, the last few weeks through a recent survey. Underpaid, exhausted, underappreciated, and fearful of their own health and safety. That's what many are telling state leaders. One nurse responded to the survey saying, quote, We're not factory workers. We cannot be on our feet running for 13 hours a day with no breaks, no lunches, and minimal pay. Now an update on a moving tribute made to the London Police Department. Last month, a widower's emotional letter was sent to the London Police. In it, the man thanked the department for an officer's act of kindness made on the couple's honeymoon more than 70 years ago. And as Shelby Lofton reports, the letter's author received a response that prompted his children to go back and visit a town where a special family memory was made. And my father found the card, actually, just here a while back, and that's how it started. The story begins with Dan and Yvonne Green, newlyweds from small town Indiana. Graduated high school in 49, got married in 1950, and headed to the Smoky Mountains for their honeymoon. That trip brings the Greens back to Kentucky. Like a family reunion every year around October 22nd which was mom and dad's wedding anniversary. Every year, they take a road trip down memory lane. He and mom just did everything together. Breakfast every morning at their same restaurant. Walks maybe in the afternoon. Recalling the stories their parents told them. They must have parked in a wrong parking spot, and the London Police Department was so kind to put the little red card on their car, just saying, hey, welcome to London, but here's a few of our rules, you know, and that touched my mother. Natalie Thompson's mother would carry that card in every wallet she had. She passed away two years ago. Very hard on dad. He tried to, he had to kind of think of a new routine. Dan Green wrote to the police department after finding his wife's treasured card. Thompson says her father was touched to receive a response from Chief Kilburn. Nobody writes handwritten notes to get, you know, back and forth anymore. On this year's reunion trip to the Smokies, the Green children visited the police station to put faces to names. Chief was very surprised that I had contacted him and that touched him. She says her 90-year-old father is doing well, encouraged by the act of kindness that keeps on giving. It's a love story. Someone said it should be a Hallmark movie. <laughs> In London, Shelby Lofton, WKYT. Oh, what a sweet story. The 48th annual Kenny Huffman Tennis Classic wrapped up yesterday at Bob Amos Park in Pikeville. The tournament saw 68 competitors take to the courts in singles and doubles action. All for a good cause. All proceeds of the tournament go directly to scholarship funding. Kenny Huffman, whom the tournament is in remembrance of, died at a young age due to cancer and was, was an avid tennis player. We spoke to tournament leaders about what it means for it to continue annually for nearly 50 years and the support they have seen from the community. We're certainly looking forward to the 50th anniversary tournament in a couple of years. Uh, we've gotten a lot of support from you know businesses and donors uh, through the years because uh, you know the, you don't generate enough money from entry fees and things like that to take care of the cost of the tournament and to provide scholarship money. Vanover said many of the competitors were from out of state, but it was a mix. It was a mix, solid mix of locals as well as including the U Pike women's tennis team. Vanover also stated he was grateful for the amount of entries into the tournament as well.
608 here on this Monday morning and we continue to track the possibility for showers and storms roll into our region and some of those could be on the strong to severe side. We see where the rain is now in the front basically coming through and into parts of uh, southern Kentucky. Take a look at live pinpoint Doppler radar. It is approaching our region there out to the west. Maybe a few scattered showers already starting there in parts of Pulaski and Wayne counties. Maybe trying to get into Rock Castle County as well before too long. So that uh, model there pretty much on the money. We take a look at our temperatures already in the mid to upper 60s there from Moorhead down toward Monticello. Further east you come, 40s in Jonesville, 50s in Wise, Harlan, and Middlesbrough this morning. So that's 11 degrees warmer in Hazard than it was this time yesterday. Same for Monticello, 13 degrees warmer in Moorhead and a couple of spots. Uh, everybody else pretty much warmer, but still lower digits there for Harlan and Wise. Ashland too, all at four mile or four degrees warmer. Headlines, it is a severe weather alert day, so strong storms continue to be possible through at least the first part of your day. And then it looks like a soggy and cooler week overall ahead. Dakota. All right, Brandon, thank you so much, and thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. When we return, the President of the United States meets up with senators to eat some breakfast and talk some politics at the same time.